Today on the show, we come back to you at the turn of the tide. Hello there, and welcome to The Lost Cantina, the podcast that explores the stories, characters, and themes behind our favorite galaxy far, far away. I'm Kevin. And I'm Jaden. And we are back with part two of episode five. Part one was really long. Part very long. Part two, probably not. This is probably going to be a really short one. Part two is... uh... Potentially so short, this might just be connected to the first episode, depending on how Connor edits it. So we'll see. If you're hearing, a, well, if this is a part two, if a part two shows up on your feed, I was wrong. Yeah, I I don't know. I think the last one might. It's just there's so much shit. There in was the first so part. much shit in the first part. There's still good shit in this one, and we're actually gonna finish the like the full episode wrap up discussion in this part. Yeah. So if you haven't heard our like take on the first part of episode five, please stop and go watch that now or listen to that. Seriously. Watch the episode and then listen to what we say about it. Um, yeah. And if you haven't watched, of course, any of Ahsoka yet, like, I don't know what you're doing. Like we said in the last one, I genuinely don't understand where you're going here. If you're listening to these and you're, you're, we appreciate you being here. But uh, yeah, you're like, cool, and you're a crazy person. You're cool and all, but you should probably... Go watch you should, it. You should, yeah, you should go watch it. But of course, we love to hear from our listeners, and that's all of you. So email us at thelostcantinapod at gmail.com if you have any thoughts or comments or any jokes about these two Italian boys just talking Star Wars. Uh, yeah, and then also, of course, follow us on Twitter which we're not really using as much, mostly Instagram and TikTok at the Lost Cantina. If you're confused, it's because it's called X now. Uh, Yeah, we don't. I kind of just stopped using it, really. I don't see the point anymore. I scroll. I scroll a lot. It's whatever. Other than that. But before we dive in, uh, if you haven't watched the first episode of Ahsoka, as well as episodes one through five on Disney+, Plus, now is the time is our final warning. All right, now that you've been warned, we're going to take a quick break to get our ads through, and then we'll jump into the episode. All right, we've officially warned you. We've heard our ads. Now let's dive on into it. We return to the Ocean of Setos, where Ahsoka was seen in the middle of the water, not floating, just kind of staying close enough to the surface that she could be, you know, seen. And she opens her eyes and sees the light of the ghost as one of the rebel pilots dives into the water to save her. Which I was wondering how she got on the ship to do that, but I, I will chalk I that up to science, I guess. Uh, Carson tells Hera that they got her, and Ahsoka can only seem to say Anakin's name over and over again. It's now morning. We don't really know how long they've been at searching for her or how long she was in the water, but we're just going to assume all night. Jason has been sitting there the entire time, just kind of waiting for them to get back, which is really irresponsible to just leave your son and Chopper sitting next to a cliff. Well, remember, Chopper's going to, you know, take over. Listen, he's got a babysit Chopper. He's got a babysit Chopper and his mountain of skulls. Yeah. He sees them coming back and he smiles. And then it kind of cuts away and Ahsoka wakes up and she's now illuminated in the light of the planet's star, symbolizing her new life and awakening. And Kevin wrote in your big, bold letters, this is her Gandalf moment. It is. And I cannot disagree based on what she looks like going forward, her outfit. They said, they said that that was the whole thing. They were like mimicking, they were mimicking Lord of the Rings here, 
and she was, you know, change like you know how um Gandalf basically spoiler alert if you haven't ever seen anything on Lord of the Rings. Uh so Gandalf dies, goes They're listening to, to this know, podcast, they've seen Lord of the Rings. Yeah. They're like here's the thing, like he so he dies, he goes to an af- the afterlife, if you will, not really an afterlife, just he goes he goes to their essentially world between worlds or, or world beyond. Yeah. And then they send him back because they're like, nah, you gotta go back, bro. And he's like, oh come on. And they were like, nope, you gotta go back. And that's kind of what this is. She was sent back by Anakin. Yeah. Because there ain't no fucking way she survived she... being in the water that long. Okay, the brain damage is saying Anakin over and over again. I'm sorry. No. This she shit. Was a, she was, was a lot more willing dead. to go back than Gandalf was, let's be honest here. All right, yes. But that, no, she was she was dead or she was straight up in, in just, she was there. She was in peril. So it's a great form of awakening, right? On, yeah. on her part, right? She's no longer shrouded in the clouds, all that stuff. Like, this is a really good metaphor kind of for this whole thing, right? Like, her guilt, all that stuff. Like, now the storm is past, and now it's peaceful, right? Like, there's the sun and everything, and she's she's thinking clearly. It's just a great cinematic way of revealing this, right? So, Hu Yang comes in, and he greets her, and he tells her she was out for an entire rotation. So, a whole rotation of this planet, she was out. Could it have been 20 minutes? I don't know what the rotation is. So probably a day. St- I think I think they use rotation as like a standard uh, of like a day. Yeah. yeah but yeah. it's like I hate I hate it. I hate that measurement because it's like fucking planets rotate at different speeds. Yeah. Well, is it Coruscant rotation? Like what? Like, you know what I mean? That's like, the maybe... thing. We don't know. Because like if yeah. it's if it's if it's galactic, if they have a galactic standard, it shouldn't be a rotation. Actually. It should just be a day. You should be like, all right, it was a, t- a day. Well, he's also a droid, so he's like, you know what? Yeah. You're out for an entire rotation. <laughs> the planet of Cetos rotates once every two years. You're in a coma for two <laughs> years. The war's over. Thrawn won. <laughs> so he also tells her that Jason is the reason that she survived. And he tells her that Hera and everyone came to help her, right? Like, no matter, like, he was like, yep, they all came here for you. Yep. And then because he's such a little shithead he's he's <laughs> such a perfect little droid he's like it was not it wasn't supervised and authorized it wasn't allowed but but you know like he's like has to tell somebody yeah um and he seems to have like you know he, he's he's happy but he's a little tattletale uh ahsoka then asks about sabine and hu yang says uh, they weren't able to find her and they were honestly hoping that she could explain where you know she might have been and he also hands her, like, the map that's been just shattered because, you know, Balin stuck his sword in it. Mm-hmm. And that's not a euphemism. That's He literally took his lightsaber, laser sword and stabbed the device <laughs> and destroyed it. Laser sword. Uh, back at the ruins, Ahsoka is now wearing her Gandalf robes. That's just what I'm going to call them because they're just yeah. literally just white, white robes. Very similar to Luke's robes, I noticed, nope. too. Like, uh, 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 sequel trilogy Luke's robes. Which, if that's their way, they're going with it with like the the new Jedi Order robes. I kind of like them. I think they're they're kind of they're kind of. I think neat. they look fine. She's walking through the ruins and she encounters Jason, Hera, and Chopper. And Jason actually runs over and gives Ahsoka a hug. And it's kind of fun to see this because it's like, I, I like he's he's relieved to you know to help to to have helped her, but I think also like it kind of shows like, hey, he sees her as like the hero that 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 you know. Kind of, he's she's kind of the reason that he's around because she was, yeah. you know, saved them uh, many times in Rebels. So that's probably where yeah. he, where he gets like that that affinity from. And I know, and, like, I I wrote down about like the little Padawans and you know Masters kind of thing because that that's what I thought it reminded me of. Okay, yeah, I can see it. I like it. Kind of, I felt don't like know. Like for her, like think about it. Like when she was part of the Jedi order and all this other yeah. stuff, she was around Padawan stuff and, 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 and just that relationship dynamic of like everybody, like all the, all the younglings being excited to see their masters or see like all these cool other Jedis pre-war, pre-war mind you. Yeah. She was jumped in there pretty close to the beginning of the war. I'm wondering, I'm wondering what the, we, we didn't really get to talk about this, but like, I'm wondering what Hera's thoughts are about Jason becoming a Jedi himself. Because on the one hand, you know, he could really help a lot of people. But on the other hand, 
That's how his dad died. So, like, I wonder what her internal struggle would be. I have thoughts. I have Hu Yang thoughts. You have Hu Yang night. thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have to get to, we'll have to, get to those uh, at another time. Um, it's so funny, too, because, like, Jay, he clearly is very powerful in the Force because he asks her who she was fighting. Mm-hmm. And, like, Ahsoka kind of goes, like, what? Like, how the fuck did you know about that? Like, what, yeah. what do you mean? And Hera immediately is like she, she she's kind of like well we don't have time for this bullshit. Yeah, she we, shoes everyone to the ship, and she and Ahsoka like they got a chat, and so she's like go go to the ship. And of course, Jason's like I've been to a starship, like I know. She's like go go take a look at the starship, and he's like, uh, you're Hera and you're my mom. I've yeah. seen a starship. <laughs> and what's funny though, Ahsoka goes a Jedi starship, and then he's just like. Yeah, that, that set oh, off his yeah, spider senses. I'm gonna go. He's like, oh, fuck, right, you're a Jedi. Like, oh, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> now, what I found really kind of important here that I didn't see a lot of people online freaking out about was she's kind of considering herself a Jedi now. She's saying, have you seen a Jedi starship? Because, like, if she's mm. not a Jedi, she's not going to really say that's a Jedi starship, right? But, like, uh, I don't know. I, don't I know. feel like it's... I feel like, well, the, the ship is officially called a Jedi starship. It is a, it's an official... Dang. It was an official Jedi ship, so I'm thinking that's like like she's not a Jedi, but like Hu Yang, technically Hu Yang is the Jedi Order right now. Yeah, but like she could say like, "Have you seen like my star?" I don't know. I just feel like for her, she, to, like, she knows she knows how obsessed Jason is with Jedi. Like she can tell. I like guess, it's like yeah, my dad was yeah. one, but also like she did just technically finish her Jedi training, so there is that. I, I'll give you that. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that one. I, I concede no. that point, sir. He he's all excited, and Hu Yang is like, "I'll show you the training room," and he's even more excited now because he's like, "Training room!" And he's yeah. like, "Are you? Will you train me?" And Hu Yang just instantly goes, "No," <laughs> and, and he goes, "Do you know how to build a lightsaber?" And he's like, "Yes." So like this interaction, in in my opinion, is kind of important too, is because we know Jason's a force user, right? Hu Yang even admitted that he's a, a force user. Like, he knows he's a force user. But he won't train this youngling. And I kind of think that Hu Yang is, like, almost more respectful to Hera in that instance because he's like, you have attachments. I would not want to step, like, over the bounds of those attachments. Yeah. You can't be a Jedi at the moment. Like, it's it nope can't happen and that's where i mean like i have my hu yang thoughts i agree with that because i think if Hera said yes that's different um but i think I, hu yang knows because like here's the thing we have sabine who had attachments and all stuff and he well, still was training her i mean here's 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 the fucking thing um the jedi not liking attachments is bullshit um, if you look at Luke, Luke's attachments to his friends and family oh, are what made him stronger. Uh, every that's what made Ezra stronger. That's what made Kanan yep. stronger. Yep. At- attachments can be a force for good, and I'm so fucking sick of people throwing the like, like guys, you're using the old Jedi rhetoric. That order failed. They yeah, all but died. To Yang, but to Hu Yang, that's different. Hu Yang he is a robot. Agree. You're right. He's you're he right. He's a robot. A robot. But like, I'm so sick of people being like, "Oh, Jedi, there's like attachments." Like, no, we've we've shown time and again that attachments actually make them stronger. That's why Anakin was so you, good at wait, doing stuff. Are you saying that the Sith are right? Uh the Sith, the Sith don't I, even. I mean, I mean, I mean, the, no, the Sith. When the Sith with attachments, they they don't really have. They don't care about attachments. They care about uh, using things to make you more powerful. There's a difference but there. Their attachments are are. It's a path to the dark side. Oh, sorry. I, I, I guess. <laughs> oh man. I mean, hey, that's what Palpatine exploited about Anakin, right? Yeah. He exploited his attachments. Yeah. And his other emotions, and then that kind of led to. Well, we all know what that led to. The Youngling Slayer three thousand. Anyways, Hera jumps right in, gets straight to the point. And she says, "Where is Sabine?" And Ahsoka says, "The last time she saw her, she was holding the map," and. Ahsoka then does, which I knew Kevin loved this, uh, she's, she then does the Jedi Survivor, Jedi Fallen Order trick of like trying yeah. to, to, to take uh, a memory, a forced memory impression off of the item. It's so cool, dude. 
they had that power in Heroes. For those who've ever watched the show Heroes, rest its rest its many of sad souls. But there was a person who had that that ability. Wasn't that show shit like, after like the first season? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, okay. It, was, yeah. it was my favorite TV show back in the day, and they fucking butchered it. But there was a really cool power just like that, and you know, you touch an object and you can like relive its past, which is really cool. So she she takes it and she starts actually she's able to commune with the memory and she can feel exactly what happened. We hear scenes, you know, we hear scenes from the from the last episode and she's really emotional. She seems to feel the emotion that Sabine felt at that moment. She tells Hera that they took her and Hera, more to the point, just goes. She's just happy that she's actually alive. Yeah, Hera's kind of all gung ho right away. She's like, all right, let's go after them. Like right away. Like She's very Hera. You know, and Carson comes in and he tells her that the fleet is now on its way. He's like, hey, yo. uh, Yeah, now they send people. (laughs) Yeah, now they send in some people and that's going to be a problem. And uh, even Harris, she's like, oh, they're a little late. And he says, I don't think they're coming to help. And Chopper goes, "Uh uh-oh. Like, he's like, oh, you in trouble. Mom's in trouble. And Ahsoka's still obviously weak. She looks like shit. Um, she's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out a way to find Sabine and Hera, like, you know, like Hera's like, I'll handle the rest of this. Like, we'll, we'll figure this out. And Ahsoka looks at Sabine's helmet, which is just sitting there on a rock. It's a really cool shot. And she's, she's, she's just kind of sitting there staring at it, contemplating a way to go find her. Yep. And all of a sudden Ahsoka looks up and through the clouds that are starting to part and let all this light in, she sees Pergil and she starts hearing them. But it's not as creepy now. Like it was creepy before, right? Like the last yeah. couple of episodes, Pergil sounded really like hella creepy. Now they don't really sound that creepy. And that's kind of when like the realization hits. And you can feel it. They use the music to try to like get you to really feel that realization that she's having. And it's like, oh shit. Those guys can do the thing. And they like, can you're do like that all thing. right. Yeah, they can do the thing, man. And so yeah, all of a sudden it's just like, wow, we got it. So back on the ship, uh Mon Mothma is telling them that she's done all that she can. She asks if they have any evidence to back up the claim of what happened or Thrawn. Which yeah. I mean Hera says no, but yeah. like a giant fucking ship that was built with, with with hidden imperial money jumps away. Don't they have dash cams? Yeah, like, that, don't I, they have Okay, a I was gonna say, cam? where is the space like, dash cam to tell us what the, what the fuck? fuck happened? Ugh. Like, listen, two pilots are dead. Aren't they technically space cops too? Yeah. Wouldn't they have a dash they, cam or at least body like, cams? Um, yeah, like come on, I that that tiff that got me tiffed. So uh, you know, Harris says no, and Mon Moth was like, "Well, I guess that's it. You have to come back to Coruscant to answer for what yeah. you've done." And Harris says that she doesn't agree. And Mon Moth says that the Grand Oversight Committee is meeting about possibly permanently suspending her, <laughs> firing her. Ooh, you in trouble? And, and she says that the only way that she's going to get out of this is if Ahsoka comes and helps her. And at that moment, Ahsoka comes in and says that she knows how to follow Sabine, which yeah, is like, so... hey, I can exonerate you. This person can exonerate you, but I'm leaving. Yeah, it's like, oh, no, the one person I need is leaving me. Don't they always? I know, right? So all their, this is Star Wars. That's what always happens. Yeah. So the, all their ships take off. Now there's three X-Wings left. And all the ships take off, and they start ascending up towards space. And Hera says she's not really sure that, like, the plan, like, she's not sure if she agrees with this. And Hu Yang goes, I, me too, I don't agree with this. <laughs> they think she's nuts. They think Ahsoka's whack. It's like, yeah, maybe you do have some brain damage. I don't know. Yeah. Man. And Ahsoka now completely dressed in all white. Like, at first she was wearing just a robe. Now she's like a robe all thing. Now white. she's all white. And she says that there's no other way. Without the map, we don't have the proper hyperspace coordinates. And everybody's kind of sitting there like, what the fuck's going to happen? And then they fly their ships through the clouds, and they come across a large group of Purgle. This time... They're kind of flying really peacefully, right? Like, it's different than when they ascended to the planet. It was all, like, 
storm kinda... and like fucking hectic and the pergola were like, wow, what the fuck? Oh my God, what are these things? And like everything was all chaos. Now it's just kind of chill. Yep. And they're, they're flying peacefully through the sky. And Hu Yang says that there's a larger one up ahead, right? There's a larger pergola. And Ahsoka is like, all right, that'll do. And so she leaves the cockpit and then she goes on top of the ship. And she's standing on top of the ship, and they leave, like, Hu Yang's holding the ship, like, just steady. And a larger pergil all of a sudden just starts coming up. It's really, it's a really cool sequence. It's super cool. Those things are fucking huge. Uh, you know, she steps up, and then she starts to, like, she tries to commune with it. Like, it's really cool. She's like, you know, uh, there's a sequence. It's almost like they understand each other, which is what I, I love. Yeah. yeah, it's really reminiscent of what Ezra can do with other uh life forms like he's yes. able to commune with other life forms really well which and i think they talk about it in in some canons but it's like there there are certain jedi can do certain things a lot better than other jedi like mm -hmm. i think they even said like uh cal kestis is really good at the memory thing yeah 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 which is which you know like uh, jedi can do it but like some people are actually yeah. like really good at it which is why like he has entire like fucking sequences yep. that play off in his mind anakin's but, really good at the procreation thing too yeah <laughs> which what jutsu is that <laughs> Reproductive bending. <laughs> <laughs> so Carson uh, lets Hera know that part of the fleet has arrived. And Hera says they can't interrupt what's going on. They don't want to scare the Purgle. That yeah. That's going to screw everything up. So uh, she says to buy them time. So Carson plays dumb and asks the fleet to identify themselves. And the really funny thing is that they don't. They're like, yeah. you know, they, they hit him with like, aren't you far from home? And he's like, repeat. Please identify yourself. I mean, they just don't identify themselves. And he's no, like, they never do, which is really funny because it's like, the fuck are you doing? It was very reminiscent of Rebels because it was like, what the fuck? Like, you, you know who we are. Well, like, he's playing it by the book. He's doing it the right way, right? Yeah, sure. I don't know. I thought it was <laughs> sly. Oh, I loved it. I, I, Carson, Carson's growing on me, man. I, yeah, I, like, I liked cool, him before, cool. but like, I, you know, like, yeah. sometimes you meet a character and you're like, ah, oh, this kid's an interesting. Like, he just gets better every episode yeah. you yeah. see him in. Yeah. He is, he, you know what he reminds me of? Uh, Phil Coulson from phase one of the Avengers in Marvel movies. Yeah. Just a guy, just yeah. a guy who's there. Just working, just yeah. doing the nine to five gig. I love those guys. Yeah. Which is why it sucks that they canceled uh, Rangers of the New Republic. Because he was going to be such a big part of that, apparently. What are the ships that uh, showed up? So, I, recently I thought they were... Um, there was, I can't, oh God, it, it kills me because I, 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 we talk about them in every episode and I forget to look them up. They, they remind me very much of the, uh, there, there's a torpedo frigate that you could get in Empire at War. Yeah. It was, it was in the same body shape as that, but apparently it is not that. They're saying that it's a new type of ship that was designed for the New Republic. Oh, It just happens to look cool. like it. So. That's cool. And I, I, I haven't been able to find a name on them yet, but I'm sure if I, I'm sure somebody's put the. 10 page wikipedia article up already but yeah just send me an email and tell me what they are because i would love to know the name of them so the fleet like they call him out and they're like and uh you know they're like you know they want to know where Hera is and he's like oh that's classified information <laughs> and he's like uh, halt there you need to stop your approach to the planet you know he's he's really yeah, trying he's to do what part. he can and yeah. it's kind of a smart way to do because he's like hey man you guys haven't identified yourselves like i'm just you know i'm doing what i'm supposed to do here you guys are out of line yeah. They're at a standstill, and he's like, hey, no, they got to complete their mission. Uh, Hera's trying to complete the mission. And they're like, what, what mission are you talking about? There is no mission. He's like, I respectfully disagree. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, come on, man. We're all on the same side here. Yeah. And he's like, uh, no, kind of, <laughs> yes. Listen, my boss is being an asshole. You're being an asshole. I'm just kind of here. I saw two of my guys get killed like 20 minutes ago, so like. One rotation ago. <laughs> One rotation Whatever. ago. We don't know what that means. <laughs> Time is weird. We live in space. It's a whole thing. And yeah. the, the, finally, the captain's just like, you know what? Just arm the tractor beams. We're, we're taking this guy in. And they get aggressive, man. Like, that's the thing. Like, they kind of seem authoritarian. And it starts feeling like shit again. Like, it feels kind of empire-y, you know? They're just yeah. like... They're not listening to him. They're not identifying themselves. They like try to do that bait and switch thing. We're like, we're all on the same side. Yep. Why don't you tell? Her? And and he's like, if you've got nothing to hide, show me your papers. Exactly. That's what it feels like. And then they're just like, arm the tractor beam. Just get them ready. And I'm like, just, whoa. 
to be fair, he's being he's being a little cheeky. He's been he was but, being a little cheeky that whole encounter though. But then they do the other thing where they're just like, "We're gonna threaten to remove your rank." Yeah, it's true. So you know they they give him like, "Hey, we're gonna remove your rank," and then he's like, "Okay, fine, I'll tell you, but you're not gonna believe me." And that's the thing is like, I don't think there's anything wrong with him telling them, right? I don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with that. No, like, not at all. Hera told what was going on, but you know nobody believed her. So I I don't know. I just think there's nothing wrong with what he's what he's doing right now. No, but back on the that. planet's atmosphere, right? Jason is mesmerized by the Purgle. He he's like super into them. He's like asking questions about them. He's talking to Hera about it, and he's like, "Wow, these are these are amazing. This is what you told me stories about. This is amazing." And she's looking pretty happy. Like this whole time, like every time she's in a scene with him and she looks at him, she looks so happy. And I think that is what gets me with her is like, that's a good mom. She's yeah. just happy to see her kid, right? Well, and I think she's seeing the wonder in his eyes, which is so great because like she's a little jaded from the way the world is, you know? Yeah. But I, I just think like you see the hope, right? In him. Yeah. Star Wars is about hope. That's what it is, you know? And, like, that's him. He's the hope that she has. And speaking of hope, we switch to Ahsoka, who's standing there, you know, now stretching her arm out to this Pergil, and in the subtitles it says, Hopeful Music is playing. Ah. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, so she she's reaching out with the Force to commune with the big boy, and we see that it's I. We see one of its eyes just whoosh right towards her. Yep. It's kind of cool. It's kind of scary, but it's kind of cool. And it opens its mouth. A lot of fucking teeth. Holy shit, it made me uncomfortable. A lot Space of teeth. whales! It was... It, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, we get a good old Pinocchio kind of situation here where they're going to have to go in the mouth, right? She knocks on the window and tells Hu Yang, go inside the purgle. And Hu Yang just yells back at her, and he goes like, "Get inside!" He's like, "Get! What are you fucking doing? Get back what inside!" You, what do you mean? What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. And so they fly on into the Purgle's mouth, and they kind of all the Purgle just they start going into space, and it's really fucking cool to see all these Purgil going through space and yep. trying to pass these ships and all that other stuff. It's it, it, it's it's really cool. They get into the, into the Purgle's mouth and. Uh, Hu Yang's like, you know, are you certain that we're going to be able to find Sabine, like that they know where she is? And yep. she goes, no idea. And it's like, what? what? <laughs> Hu Yang just turns and looks at her and he's like, what? And she says, we'll just see where it goes. And he goes, it could go anywhere. And she just doesn't care. She just says, I know it's better than going nowhere. And it's like, this was what? a really big fucking gamble. Let's be honest. This was a terrifying oh, huge gamble. fucking gamble. But like, here's the thing. Hu Yang is like typical Jedi bullshit, like yep. typical fucking Jedi. And he just turns his head and just faces forward and he doesn't say a word. It's like the most quiet he's ever been. He's like, fuck. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, great. all right, I'm just going to be quiet because otherwise they're going to shut me off again. So Carson now is finished, right? He's finished talking about what's going on. And they're kind of looking at him like what they're like, they're like what you the sound fuck? you sound a bit crazy carson and then the purgles show up and they're like oh shit those are space whales yeah and yeah so it's really fucking cool to see these these whales go through the ships and they just say okay let 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 them pass like it's fine like let let the, let the purgle go and hera shows up with her ship and everybody everybody's kind of just like now right there and ahsoka and hera have like little conversation about like you know i wish i could go with you it's okay don't worry about it like i'll bring her back that kind of stuff and yeah. hera of course ends it with may the force be with you and so then we get a great shot of the pergil they open up their tentacles and show their space butts and they use their space butts to <laughs> jump into hyperspace and you see this light hit Hu Yang and Ahsoka again, yep. and they go, boof, and all the Pergil fart into hyperspace. They fart into hyperspace. <laughs> now that I'm, like, describing it, I'm like, wait a minute. This episode is <laughs> a lot of, this episode is a lot of, uh, interesting imagery, to say oh, the least. Oh, Star Wars. That doesn't better sound better when we're else. just describing it. But that's the end of the episode. 
Yes. And that's the official end of episode five. So before we get into our thoughts, we're going to take a quick break, but we will be right back. Right. All right. We are back talking about space farts and all that that entails. All right. Here's the deal. Yeah. I think you make a deal with me. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. I, I said it in the last part. And I'll say it again. Skull was right. Balin Skull was right. It's literal the Gandalf situation. Like the destruction of that person's care, like of that character leads to them coming back as a rebirth of something new and more powerful. Like that's just what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I thought it was boring when, when I know we said we we're going to talk about the parts where they were not in the world of two worlds. I didn't give a fuck about any of this shit. I just, I was like, cool, great. The kid has force energy powers. That's so cool. He can hear what's going on. That's amazing. Get back to it. I want to see more Ahsoka and Anakin. Get so, back to the fight as he slaps his computer. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was fine. I got it. I understood it. I thought those scenes went a little long, but yeah, I'm here for it. It's fine. I, uh, the ending part was good. It was a little slow. It was like 20 minutes. Yeah. That was all 20 minutes. Like us, what we described, it, that was like a 20 minute something in the episode. It was like a whole it, other half of the episode. I'm, and I'm not going to lie. It went fast. I'm not going to lie. It very much did feel like it was like, all right, we've, we, we, we got the stuff we wanted to tell in this episode, but we kind of have to end it so we can get to the next part. It was very, yeah. it felt a little tacked on in my opinion. Well, like they didn't want to end it where the cliffhanger is. Oh, she's showing up and like, fi they find her again. Right. That's not the cliffhanger they wanted to end. They wanted to end on the cliffhanger where they leave because yeah. otherwise they'd have to have a whole new episode of them going through it and doing this would have been like sucks. i feel like they could have tacked that on to the to the beginning of the next episode i feel like honestly yeah but it wouldn't it would not it, wouldn't, it would not have been as impactful thing. yeah yeah so i mean overall i like the wardrobe change like that was cool the symbolization with the lighting and all that stuff that was great that was that was really good um and yeah carson man I, give me more of him yeah he's great 10 out of 10 for him no notes I think that just to, just to like cap off what I have felt for this episode, this was something that when the Clone Wars came out, we all went, hey, wouldn't it be cool if they could ever get Hayden Christensen to come back and play Anakin Skywalker again? Yeah. And we all said, no, that's crazy. He hates Star Wars. There's no way they'll bring it back. And then they did it, and it was... 95% of everything that I wanted to get out of that. I think yeah. that they were like very, very fucking close to being perfect. Mm -hmm. And I think it was just a budget thing that really stopped yeah. them from going a hundred percent because they were like, eh, we still have more show to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If this, if this sequence had happened at the end of Ahsoka and they could go balls to wall all out, I think we would have had like fully rendered backgrounds and like, you yeah. know, way more clone troopers. They might have actually gotten Jango Fett, Boba Fett, clone troopers actor to show up instead of just doing a, a voice line on his fucking iPhone. Yeah. Come on, men, let's go. All right, that's it. All right, send me the check for $15,000. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I think you're right. The budget, I don't know how much budget this had. I don't, I don't either, but I, I got to assume that they getting him back was probably not cheap, and I'm, but I'm glad they did it. I think that the the the... The good and bad of this episode was that we got to see an actual good fucking live action lightsaber fight, which we have not yeah. gotten in a long fucking time. And Jesus Christ, prequel lightsaber fights are still the goat. Yeah. They are undisputedly yeah, like, the best. For those who don't know, I just Googled how much was Ahsoka's budget. And granted, I will tell you, we are recording this in December. That's all I'll say. We are recording yeah. this in December of 2023, and the budget has still not been released, but they believe it was more than $100 million. That is... Is that a lot? I don't think so. For not this? for what we got, honestly. Not for yeah. what we got. Them green screen studio or those, those, those weird, like, bubble 3D studios that they're using now are really, really state-of-the-art. They're really great, but also, I feel like it limits... It limits what you can do in a scene. Move. Yeah, it, it limits a lot of the movement. I, I will say, though, was it Mando Season 2 when they're fighting uh, on the planet, uh, Mando and Boba Fett, 
against all those stormtroopers. Yeah. That looked like it was shot in someone's backyard. That looked like a really well done fan edit. Yeah, that so was it's, cool. That way it was cool, but I was just like, man, this this feels kind of cheap and cheesy. Whereas I don't feel like any part of Ahsoka felt cheap or cheesy. But overall, I think like this episode was pretty good. It gave us what we wanted. We got a little bit of extra stuff. We we did end on a pretty good cliffhanger. Yeah. And overall, like I think it was a nice little like I think the ending like this part two was nice a nice little nice little bow yeah. wrapped on our present. And I can't wait for us to get to talk about the next episode. I really and truly do. I think it's oh I'm I'm pumped. It's it's just it's so good. Everything everything leading up to this has been so good so far. Stellar. Ten out of oh, ten. Yeah. No no complaints from me. Well, there's complaints from me because I'm a Star Wars fan. Of course there will be, but no major complaints from me. I feel like I'm so like positive and optimistic about shit like this. I'm like, I had fun, so that's yeah. all that fucking matters to me, man. Which which is why I'm here. I'm here to I'm here to be the wet blanket, which is why uh well, catch our catch our review of Halo season two when it comes out in February, for, everybody. Yeah, Jesus Christ, uh, while I want to fuck. That'll be die. on the lore party feed. That'll be on the lore party channel. So check that out if you want to hear me want to strangle myself every day watching that crap. For those also, for everybody who's listening on the lore party feed. Before we end this episode, we are releasing our Lost Cantina episodes after we release them on on the Lost Cantina feed. So we're releasing these on the Lost Cantina feed first, and then it's going to be a couple days until you hear this on the on the Lore Party feed. So go ahead and follow the Lost Cantina feed and start listening to us on that one. Like and subscribe. But yes, uh, that's that's what how the schedule is uh, being being going on for now and you'll see the republish uh, part on the on the lore party part yep and with that we hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did please take a second to rate and review us on apple Podcasts, spotify or wherever you get your podcasts it really helps us grow the show and be sure to connect with us on instagram and twitter at the lost cantina thank you so much for listening and we'll catch you on the other side of the galaxy